the moving statue. I dare you, said Ben. I dare you to climb onto the statue and sit on the horse. Rocky looked at the others. They were all waiting to see what he would do. He didn't really want to climb onto the horse. Still, he couldn't say no. With all these friends watching him, he took a quick look around, and then he began to climb up the statue. It wasn't easy, but he managed to reach the horse and scramble up behind the duke. He was feeling very pleased with himself and began to wave at the others. Suddenly, they were not looking up at him any more, but running off very quickly. What was happening? Rocky soon found out. He heard Fred's angry voice shouting at him. Get down off of that statue! Get off of that horse! Rocky didn't need to be told twice. He came down much more quickly than he got up, and he ran after the others. That night Rocky lay in bed and thought about the statue. He didn't know much about the Duke of Wellington, but he did know that he had been a very brave soldier. He wondered what it would be it would have been like to be a soldier in the Duke of Wellington's army. Rocky was very tired and soon he was drifting off to sleep. But what was that strange noise? Rocky looked out. The moon was shining and he could see the park very clearly. What was that moving on the grass? Rocky rubbed his eyes. It couldn't be. He leaned out of the window and stared across the park. Yes, it was. It was the statue moving slowly in the moonlight. Rocky watched the horse as it came over and stopped underneath his window. He stared down into the face of the Duke of Wellington, who was looking up kindly at him. <coughs> Quick! Jump down, said the Duke. Rocky wasn't sure whether he had heard the Duke speaking or just imagined it, but the Duke told him again to jump onto the horse. Rocky climbed carefully over his windowsill, shut his eyes tightly and jumped. He dropped quickly and safely onto the horse's back, just behind the Duke. Rocky felt the horse begin to move, but he did not open his eyes. He just hung onto the Duke. Very soon the horse stopped. Rocky peeked out from behind the Duke. Then he stared in surprise. They were no longer in Wellington Square, but on a hill. It was very cold and mist was swirling everywhere. Through the mist, Rocky could see hundreds of figures moving over the hillside. They were soldiers carrying guns. The Duke turned to Rocky. Get down now, he said. Rocky jumped down and stood close to the horse, watching the soldiers. The Duke called out to the nearest soldier. Give this boy a coat and a drum! The soldier hurried off into the mist and returned quickly with a coat and a drum. He helped Rocky put on the coat and he hung the drum around his neck. Now Rocky felt like a real soldier. The Duke looked down at Rocky from his horse. Play the drum when I shout, he told him. Yes, sir, said Rocky. The men had moved into a long line behind the Duke. He raised his hand and roared. Quick, march! All the men began to march in time to the beating drums. Rocky remembered just in time what the Duke had said. He began to play his drum. rat a tat tat rat tat tat he played as he marched alongside, along beside the Duke's horse. He was enjoying himself so much that he forgot how cold and dark it was. The Duke smiled down at him. Keep it up, he said. You're doing very well. Rocky was so pleased that he banged the drum even harder. The noise of the drums and the marching feet rang in Rocky's ears. But what was that sound? It didn't sound like the Duke's voice. It was his mother. What was she doing on the battlefield? Wake up! Wake up! she said. Rocky slowly opened his eyes. There was no hill, there were no soldiers, and there was no Duke of Wellington. His mother was there by the bed telling him to get up. Had he dreamed it all, or did it really happen?